Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Boris Johnson and Jeremy Hunt have both defended the right of journalists to publish leaked government documents. It comes after police warnings that it could be a criminal offence under the Official Secrets Act. Scotland Yard is investigating the leak and publication of secret dispatches by Sir Kim Darrett, Britain's ambassador in Washington, which were highly critical of the Trump administration. Well, Sir Kim sub subsequently resigned. Here's our political correspondent, Nick Erdley. The leaking of Kim Darek's emails about President Trump has caused diplomatic chaos, political controversy and led to the ambassador's resignation. Now it's caused a furious row about press freedom and what papers should be able to publish. Scotland Yard has warned publishing further leaks could be a crime, last night urging the media to return any documents to the government. But many have raised concerns, including the candidates to be the next Prime Minister. It cannot conceivably be right that newspapers or any other media organisation publishing such material should face prosecution. It is embarrassing, but it is not a threat to national security. And it is the duty of media organisations to bring new and interesting facts into the public domain. Well, good afternoon. Jeremy Hunt said journalists should judge if the leaks are in the public interest. I think it is also very important to defend in a free society the right of the press to publish material that they think is in the public interest, uh, leaks that they get. It obviously mustn't breach the Official Secrets Act. Scotland Yard, though, believes it does exactly that. In a statement, Assistant Commissioner Neil Basu said the Metropolitan Police respect the rights of the media and has no intention of seeking to prevent editors from publishing stories in the public interest in a liberal democracy. However, we have been told the publication of these specific documents, now knowing they may be a breach of the Official Secrets Act, could also constitute a criminal offence and one that carries no public interest defence. That's a clarification after a barrage of criticism. But again, there's a warning. Journalists can't use the defence of public interest because it just doesn't apply to state secrets. Prosecutors would still face a public interest test, though, if they wanted to mount a case in the first place. The decision to launch that initial inquiry into the leak has been welcomed by politicians. There was real anger here at Westminster that Sir Kim was forced to resign and that uh, relations with the United States were damaged by that leak. But there is considerably more reluctance when it comes to the idea that journalists could be prosecuted too. We've heard that from senior Conservatives today. The Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn, saying too that journalists need to be protected when it comes to these sorts of stories. The question now is how and when that resolve may be tested, with speculation there could be more leaks to come. Nick, thank you very much. Scotland Yard has redoubled its warnings to the media about publishing leaks of what Britain's ambassador to the US said about Donald Trump. After an outcry about its earlier advice to the media, the Met Police issued another statement defending journalism in the public interest, but adding that publishing the documents could be a criminal offence. Tonight, is Britain's press less free than it was to the detriment of us all? Also tonight, a $5 billion fine for Mark Zuckerberg's Facebook over Cambridge oh. Analytica will break records, but critics say it won't even break the company's stride. Simona Halep says she's fulfilled her mum's dream as she defeats Serena Williams in just 56 minutes to become Romania's first ever Wimbledon champion. And he achieved notoriety, filling a cast of his head with 10 pints of his own blood. Now Mark Quinn is collaborating with thousands of willing donors, half of them refugees, to make a blood sculpture with a political point. Scotland Yard has insisted it has no intention of trying to stop journalists from publishing stories in the public interest. But Assistant Commissioner Neil Basu not only repeated his warning to the media, but made plain that anyone publishing leaked diplomatic memos could face prosecution. Police investigation is now underway into last Sunday's leak, but there's been widespread criticism of Scotland Yard's decision to target journalists, as Anya Pop reports. What's the balance between press freedom and national security? As the fallout continues after the leak of cables from the now former British ambassador to the US, the Met Police has launched a criminal investigation into who leaked it. 
But with that came the statement from the Met's Assistant Police Commissioner, which is causing controversy. Neil Basu advised journalists against publishing leaked communications, saying it could be a criminal matter. He went on to suggest journalists should instead hand them in to the police or to government. Perhaps learning from his weak defence of the ambassador on the ITV candidates debate on Tuesday, Boris Johnson, who reportedly earns a quarter of a million pounds a year for his Telegraph column, rushed to defend press freedom today. It cannot conceivably be right that newspapers or any other media organisation publishing such material should face prosecution. Because it, in, in my view, there is no threat to national security implied by the, uh, the release of this material. It, it is embarrassing, but it is not a threat to national security. Just this week, Jeremy Hunt hosted the Global Conference for Media Freedom. Today, he reiterated his support. And this is a country that has always been known for standing up for democratic values. And so we have to make sure uh, that we defend the right of journalists to publish leaks when they are in the national interest and when national security hasn't been compromised. This morning, former Defence Secretary Michael Fallon was a lone voice in defending Neil Basu's comments. Well, I don't think we, you know any of us can entirely absolve ourselves of the of the need to avoid damage to this country. There was clearly enormous political damage and diplomatic damage to our relationship with our strongest uh, ally, the United States. And uh, I think the government and, and the police are fully entitled to find out who was involved in that and if they can to prevent it stop uh, happening again. But this afternoon, instead of backtracking after strong criticism, the assistant police commissioner doubled down on his statement. The Metropolitan Police respect the rights of the media and has no intention of seeking to prevent editors from publishing stories in the public interest. However, we have also been told the publication of these specific documents, now knowing there may be a breach of the Official Secrets Act, could also constitute a criminal offence and one that carries no public interest offence. Heather Brook was given a leak of United States diplomatic cables that she helped publish in 2010. She also fought for the release of MPs' expenses that led to the scandal in 2009. First of all, whenever I hear somebody say, like, well, this is not something the public needs to know, I think, well, who are they to decide what the public gets to know or doesn't get to know? Is it some police, you know, commissioner? Actually, I feel like that's a really draconian way to run society. The role of a journalist is to receive secret information, frankly. So if he's going to say, like, you've got to stop doing that it's, or you're going to be prosecuted, I mean, that immediately shuts down so much viable and really important investigative journalism that it's it's frankly like shocking that the head of you know one of the higher up people in our police force would be advocating that whether the official secrets act was broken is now being investigated but beyond that the bigger question of what is and isn't in the public interest is again under scrutiny well, the former Culture Secretary, John Whittingdale, has just launched an all-party parliamentary group on press freedom in the UK. He's at tonight's Conservative Party leadership hustings in Colchester. And a little earlier, I asked him for his response to the Met's warnings to the media today. I don't disagree with the decision of the Met Police to conduct a criminal uh, investigation. Uh, whoever was responsible for the leak probably committed a crime and therefore should be held to account. But I'm very clear that the media uh, have not committed a crime. Uh, the media have done their job. Um, and there is a long history of the media publishing documents which are made available to them. And the Met Police need to be concentrating on finding the person who provided them, not the media who published them. Well, Assistant Commissioner Neil Basu put out a, a second statement today saying that the publication of the documents, now knowing that they may be a breach of the Official Secrets Act, that that publication could also constitute a criminal offence. So there is a clear warning to the media there. Um, he's doubling down, isn't he? Well, I, I would hope that the police would make it clear that they would not consider any uh, prosecution of journalists or newspapers who publish the material. And this is a question of media freedom. I was at the government's media freedom conference just two days ago, which was attended by about a hundred countries, where we were urging all those countries to um, honour media f freedom and not to do anything to impinge it. And it is very unfortunate that within a short space of time, the police are suggesting, it appears, uh, that they could be restricting media freedom. Well, even more than that, 
This implication of the second statement appears to be that journalists could very well face prosecution, even jail. Is that now a very real risk in your view? Well, I would hope that it isn't. I would be very concerned to see any journalists being prosecuted for publishing documents which they had obtained. It would have been better had that uh, information not been made public, but it would have been unrealistic to think that any newspaper would not have published it if they were given access to it. You're about to go into the hustings there. You're backing Boris Johnson. He's been heckled for failing to answer the question. Do you think he should get less evasive? It's right that the candidates should uh, answer the questions to the members who have the vote, uh, which will decide which of them will be Prime Minister. Um, I'm sure this will be a lively one too. Are you comfortable that he failed to support the UK ambassador to the US when he was given the chance? I, I don't accept that that's, that's an interpretation put on it. Well, he reportedly said it was a factor that Boris was given the opportunity to back him repeatedly, and repeatedly declined to, to, to give that backing. Well, Boris Johnson said that it, it wasn't for him at that time, when he is not Prime Minister, um, to say that he would either continue the appointment or not do so. But I do think, as Kim Darrick himself uh, has made clear, that the very unfortunate leaking had made his position as the uh, intermediary between the British government and the American administration almost impossible to do. But that was nothing to do with Boris Johnson. Just finally, you were very close to the former Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher. Who do you think she would be backing for the leadership and why? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think she would be very happy uh, with both of the candidates. I think she would agree that the absolute priority is delivering Brexit. That was what people voted for. It was something she felt very strongly about, uh, the whole European issue. And I've absolutely no doubt that she would think it right that the first priority of whoever becomes leader of the Conservative Party should be to deliver that. We have no idea whether she backed Brexit, obviously. But uh, John Whittendale, thank you very much for joining us. I've been